Hello everyone, Lucas from iExplore here. Tonight I'm in Shinjuku, in a little area called Omoide Yokocho, or Memory Lane. Very cool place for street photography. And I want to talk about metering modes while we're here, because it's a really kind of good location for talking about metering modes. Now, first things first, what is metering? What am I talking about? Now, in your camera, the camera needs to kind of decide, you know, how, if, assuming you're shooting on auto, the camera needs to decide how to read the light or how to determine the correct exposure for the scene. Um, if you're shooting fully on manual, manual ISO, manual shutter, manual aperture, that doesn't matter. The metering mode is not really relevant because you're setting everything yourself. But if you're shooting on aperture priority mode, for example, which I often use, it's an issue. It, it comes into play. So the metering mode is kind of how the camera determines the exposure and then sets the settings automatically. And every camera has multiple metering modes. It can use a small spot. Usually it's the same thing as your focus point, so it's a very small little spot. It can use a large, kind of like the center, or the whole frame, or some other, there are some other fancy, fancy metering modes, which I'm gonna mention later. So first I'm gonna say what I don't do. I don't like to use spot metering. And the reason I don't like to use spot metering, especially at night, but also in the daytime, is because in most street photography situations, the scene might have a lot of contrast. The darkest part of the scene and the brightest part of the scene might have a you know, huge latitude, a big difference between them. But they also might be in the scene actually right next to each other. And in those situations, if the spot is on the very bright object or the spot is on a very dark object, the rest of the frame will be completely the wrong exposure. So we avoid that, I avoid that, that mode. And if it works for you, that's great. I'm not trying to say that you can never use it, but I'm, I don't really like spot metering for street photography. So the metering mode that I like the most is the, what is often called evaluative metering or average metering, or on Nikon they call it matrix metering. Basically it's the metering mode where the camera is looking at the whole picture and deciding the exposure based off of that. It's reading the light for the whole scene, not just the center and not just a single point, but the whole, the whole picture. Now, some later cameras than mine, I use a pretty old camera actually, but some newer ones have an additional kind of extra feature of that mode. You can enable something called uh, highlight weighted metering. And what that is, is it's basically still the same thing. It's looking at the whole scene. But in addition, it's also making sure not to overexpose the highlights. And I find that that could be very useful for, for this kind of photography at night or even in the daytime. Um, but I haven't personally used this mode myself because my camera doesn't have it. No matter what metering mode you choose, you will have to take some effort to sort of predict how the camera was going to behave and then compensate for mistakes when necessary. So there are a couple of rules of thumb, a couple of things to keep in mind. First is that no matter what metering mode you're using, that only determines where you know, the camera's looking to meter. But its purpose is usually al always the same. It's to get a particular average brightness for that area. So if you're using the, the whole frame, it's gonna try to get a particularly average brightness for that whole scene. And if you turn on the highlight weighted metering, that's gonna change those rules a little bit. But nonetheless, there is a rule there. So typically what happens is when you take a photo of a very dark scene, you would think the photo would come out too dark. That's a common kind of idea that I see when I work with people on our, on our workshops that I explore. But what often happens when you take a photo of a scene that's very dark is the camera will overexpose it because it sees all the dark things and it ends up making the photo overly bright. And so then you have to use your exposure compensation to reduce the exposure. Similarly, in the opposite direction, if you take a photo of something extremely bright, like a bright you know, floodlight or something in, in an overall dark scene, the camera might see that and think, wow, that's really bright, and it'll underexpose the scene. Okay, And again, this is why I don't like to use spot metering, because if you do, you're very likely to run into that kind of problem. While on the evaluative one, you're a little bit less likely to run into it, but you will still encounter it sometimes. So you have to take that into consideration and try to stay one step ahead of your camera. So for me, when I'm shooting at night in scenes like the one behind me where it's overall pretty dark, I tend to have my exposure compensation on negative one because I don't want the camera to overexpose it. Another way to look at it is I'm trying to protect the highlights. That's how a lot of people think about it. But that's not always the case. Sometimes I don't care if the highlights themselves blow out, but I want the overall picture to look really good and have the right amount of contrast. So I hope that gives you some ideas about 
how you can you know, stay one step ahead of your camera and predict the mistakes it's gonna make and use the exposure compensation to stay one step ahead and therefore maximize your shot opportunities so that when you do see a cool moment, you take the photo and boom, it's just right out of the box. It's a good exposure. You don't have to, you know, oh no, you know, rejigger it and try it again with different settings. Of course, sometimes that'll happen. It happens to me all the time, but I do try to go for as many, you know, hits as I can. And the way to do that is to apply the ideas that I already mentioned. So that's it. Hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, of course. And remember always, challenge your eye.